This is something you quite often see, uh, particularly in power supplies. Any device where they're putting high currents through a track, you quite often see that they leave the solder resist off and allow the solder from the flow soldering process to coat the track. This is to basically increase the current carrying capability of the track by reducing its resistance. There's been a bit of discussion over at EEV blog recently about how much difference it actually makes. I thought I'd actually do some measurements to find out. Now, obviously you can't really get a reliable measure of the resistance just by sticking two, two probes on because of the probe resistance. So what we're going to do is a four-wire measurement. This is where we pass a constant current through um, two connections and then measure the voltage across the track with the other two. Um, this cancels out any effects of contact resistance because the because we're using a constant current power supply any change in resistance of the power supply will be compensated for by the power supply and obviously the voltage measurement is a high resistance measurement so any resistance there is going to be negligible. So we're going to pass one amp through this track and measure the voltage across in millivolts and that's going to give, a, give our result in milliohms. So you can see this track with the solder on it is about 18.7 milliohms. So I'm just going to desolder some of this. Um, so I'm just going to now remove some of this solder with desoldering braid, and um, let's see what difference it makes. I'd expect to see um, a slight difference due to temperature. Let's actually just evaluate that. Let's just heat the track up without taking any solder off, just to get some idea of. Yeah, you can see the resistance is going up because, of course, the temperature is increasing, but that will go back to its original value once it cools down. So let's just try this little section up here. I'll just take all the solder off. Let's let that cool down. You can see I've now now no solder, there's a bit of brown sort of flux marking on that, but that's but that's now sort of completely flat that track. And now our resistance is, it's still stabilising a bit from temperature. That looks like that's going to settle around about sort of 20 milliohms, so a very small difference, but obviously that is only a small section of track. Let's do the rest of it and see what difference that makes. Right, so that's all the solder off. Again, it's still cooling down. Just so leave it for a little while to cool down back to room temperature and see what we've got left. Right now, we're pretty back down to room temperature, and the resistance is now 26 milliohms. So it, it's reduced the track resistance by around 50%. So it's not a huge difference, but it's it's a benefit that pretty much comes for free. All they've got to do is leave the resist off, and um, because the board's flow soldered anyway, because it's through hole, because there's lots of big lumpy bits on it. So yeah, it's not a huge difference, but it probably is. Yeah, it is worth doing on the basis it doesn't really cost anything. It would, probably wouldn't be worth the cost if it was a separate process. The other slight issue, of course, is that you can't really be sure how thick that coating is going to end up in production. It depends a lot on the way soldering process. So yeah, is it worth doing? Probably yes, as long as you can do it for free. The other method, of course, for increasing uh, current capacity is to use heavier copper. Um, standard PCBs use one ounce copper. I think that's one ounce per square foot, which is, corresponds to 35 microns, and you can get sort of two and four ounce copper, um, but obviously that costs more. And on a power supply, there's only a few tracks um, carrying heavy currents. So if you use two, two ounce or heavier copy on the, copper on the whole board, a lot of that's going to waste. There's also the other issue: you can't do such fine tracks on thicker copper because of the way the ed the edges. Um, etch so if you've got a board that's got a mixture of high power stuff and fine pitch say for example you know, QFP packages you can't really use heavy copper on that at all um, because of that 